Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, with the United States announcing a phase one, two, and three startup, the cruise lines have also been planning how they were going to start up. So first off, if anyone, like I said, thinks that the cruise lines are just going to turn on the switch on, say, July 1st and, you know, say Princess's 22 ships are just going to out and start sailing all at one time, that's not how it's going to happen. First off, here's an example. Princess has seven ships going to Alaska. They've canceled five of those ships to that destination, which means if they're going to open up those ships, they have to send those ships someplace else. Where are they going to send them? All to the Caribbean? You can't. So there's got to, they got to make plans and they're going to start up slower. They're going to start up a couple ships here, a couple ships there, see what happens and gradually increase things. Along with doing that, they're also going to do some other changes. Most cruise lines have said they're going to start doing the heat sensor when you're getting on a cruise. You'll hardly notice it. It's just a scanner that's in the hallway as you're walking. They'll stop you for a half a second, say, okay, go ahead, and you'll go for it. That's all that is. And you have to have a pretty high fever for them not to let you on the cruise ship. That's just an ounce of prevention. So that is one thing that'll probably be going forward from now on. Also, another thing that they're thinking on doing to quicken the lineups is that you're going to be given a certain time and you're only going to be allowed to go to the cruise port at that certain time. I know a lot of us say, oh, it says two o'clock, but I'm going to go there at 11 o'clock anyway. No, you're going to be going there at two o'clock because you're going to be waiting outside and that's the end of it. You're going to only be allowed in unless you have priority boarding on the times that you go in. Now, not all cruise lines are saying they're going to do that yet, but that's a plan that they have in place that they might bring out. Obviously, the buffet, making sure people wash their hands, a lot more staff there and possibly serving people the food now instead of you going and getting it. I'm all in favor of that. Please do that on every cruise ship in the world. That would be most appreciative. Also, some of the other things that they're thinking on changing is when they do start up is that they're going to have less people on the ship. For instance, they're not going to sell inside cabins for a few of them. They will only sell balcony cabins, you know, in case something like this happens again. People at least have a balcony to step out on and get fresh air. They're also thinking on only selling every second cabin so they have that break between cabins, between customers. If they do that and they just, you know, that will probably lower most ships down by about 60%. Uh, so they'll be selling with 40% of passengers. They obviously don't need 100% of their crew back at that time neither. So they're thinking they will limit the amount of crew that they have and hopefully they can put all the crew members in a single cabin by themselves as well. That way, if anything does happen on board, they're already isolated by themselves and not with a roommate, which is more chance of spreading anything around. Those are just some of the things that they've been talking about bringing out, bringing up, and most of it sounds fine, sounds really good, and it doesn't sound like that's not, you know, is it going to be permanent? Are they going to be permanently only selling 60-40% of their ships? No, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, but until everything dies right down and things get better, uh, this is what they're thinking to start the few first month or two of opening. And only on a few ships and then do the same thing on other ships and gradually reopen into 2021 and hopefully be back to normal by the new year. Which would be good news for all of us if cruising could go back to normal if you're a big fan of cruising or travel at all. That would mean that everyone is able to cruise and everyone is able to travel. Even if you just want to go to a hotel and stay in a hotel for a couple days on the beach. It's, uh, 
I have a feeling a lot of people are gonna wanna do something like that. And it's funny because we're in our house, we have all the comforts of home, all of our stuff and everything, but wouldn't it be nice to just go spend three days in a hotel? It's a smaller place than you're living in, <laughs> but it will feel like such a freedom <laughs> to be able to do that. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just all in our heads. But man, it would feel so good to go down to Vancouver and spend three days in the Pan Pacific looking at the ocean. It would just, it would do all sorts of good things for my morale and my frame of mind, even though the room is smaller than the apartment I live in now. <laughs> so yeah, it's just things that are going on. There will probably be even more changes brought up, things that will try and keep us as safe as possible. And I'm okay with any restrictions they bring out to start with. You know, um, some people were complaining about the heat sensors, you know, saying that's an infringement on my rights. And I'm going, really? Walking past a scanner, checking temperatures? Uh, you know, you, you walk past a, a scanner on an airport, does that mean that's against your rights? Then you, you can't fly. You don't, don't fly anywhere. Do you want to go to Disney World? You have to go through metal detectors at Disney World. Is that against your constitutional rights? If it is, then, then you don't go to Disney World. It's as simple as that. If you don't want your temperature ta taken, don't go to on a cruise ship because it's going to come and it's going to happen. And they're privately owned and they can do what they want, unfortunately, for some people. But if it's going to keep more people safe, as long as it doesn't bring back, you know, things that I can't enjoy anymore. You know what I mean? Am I still going to be able to have specialty dining? Yes. Am I still going to order room service? Yes. Can I still sit on my balcony? Yes. Are we still going to cruise ports? Yes. It's when they say that you can't do something that we normally can do that is part of the cruise experience. Oh, we're not going to have Broadway shows anymore. That would be a big hit to me. And I would definitely start to consider which cruise lines I, I take if there's no Broadway shows anymore because some cruise lines I take because of their shows. Royal Caribbean is a perfect example. You know, shows like Mamma Mia, you know, is, is a fantastic show. And I would love to see that on the cruise ship again. So I would book that ship to see that show. Well, if they're not going to hold those shows, the lure doesn't bring as much draw to me as it would if that show is playing. So it could change a lot of the things that people look at when they're cruising. And so we'll see when the actual get ready to start opening, what those procedures are. Some of the ones like the buffet, spreading people out, less crew members, heat sensors are pretty much a given that that's what they're going to be doing when we start up. So get ready for even more. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think these are good precautions to start with? Do you think it's a good idea? Or do you think they're just going to throw open the floodgates and bring on as many people as possible and bring on every ship that they possibly can the second they're allowed to do it? I don't think see how they can, but some people are hoping. Let me know what you say down in the comments. And until next time, well, you know what? If you like the video, why not hit the like button? Why not hit the subscribe button? And until next time, have yourself a safe, and whenever we can, hopefully soon, a great vacation.